Welcome back folks, my name is Last Snow Meal, and finally, after years of waiting and years of covering cyberpunk content, the game is finally upon us. This is going to be my full non-spoiler review for Cyberpunk 2077, so let's get into it. Now before we begin, keep in mind you have all the timestamps for different parts of the review, so you can navigate. So I had an amazing chance to play Cyberpunk 2077 a few days before it came out. And so far I have about 60 hours into the game and even with that number I still haven't experienced everything this game has to offer. I did finish the main story of course, without spoilers, you will love the story, especially if you know the lore. You don't have to know the lore because the game offers you shards you find in it that give you different snippets of the history of different things in the city, of different gangs, different characters, etc. But knowing lore is recommended because it will enhance your experience even more, especially if you recognize names, events, mega corporations, it's extremely useful. Now, I want to talk about character creation even though I want to avoid showing you all of the creator because I want you to experience that properly for the first time. Overall, I was happy with the amount of options that the creator has to offer. Keep in mind, it doesn't have sliders in a sense where you can mold your character like in Dark Souls, but more like options. Uh, luckily, there are many so you can make your character stand out and yes, no worries, there are 18 plus options and, you know choices you can make. Besides the usual facial features, the game also gives you new irises you can have, different or no augmentation on your face. Besides that, there is a fair amount of hairstyles and beards, and what's more important is that they look cool, so everyone can find something they generally like. The game itself puts you in the shoes of V, a mercenary in Night City, and when they said that your decisions matter and that you are V, you are playing yourself, they mean it. There are so many options as you do a mission where you can just take a step back and say, hmm, why don't I try this, and in most cases your own way of solving things does help. And the game does offer you many ways to play any characters you want to play, so if you want to be good, be good, if you want to be bad, well be bad or evil in that sense. Besides the main story, the game offers you side missions as gigs where you can go and pull off a contract or a job which is going to give you experience, loot and street cred. And besides those gigs, you also have activities on the map like clearing out enemies, hacking data, extracting people from danger, getting certain intel or just stopping crime activity. So my playthrough was a mix of both, doing main missions and side activities. Of course, I had to finish the story for the review, but when I started my, well, second character, I went for everything on the map, everything the game has to offer. And no, I still haven't really experienced everything, and I believe I won't for a very long time just to the scope of the game, because this game is huge when you look at the city itself. I also primarily played as a street kid on hard difficulty, there is also a hardest difficulty you can choose, but I saved that for later playthroughs. Um, I did finish the intro of both Nomad and Corporate as well, and overall I'm happy with what I had seen in that. The game retains the same level of quality writing The Witcher 3 had, and also it retains the same level of quality through the entire game. You will experience all emotions in Night City, and story-wise, this game has a breathtaking one characters are just amazing, Jolly makes them even more alive due to their facial gestures, and writing is phenomenal, so on that front, this is exactly what you expect from CDPR. All the twists and turns and everything, it is extremely well done. Now let's move away from potentially spoiler territory and talk about Night City. From the first moment I left my mega building in Watson, it was a truly insane sight to look at the city for the first time. The sheer scope of verticality and size of buildings around you is a different experience. Walking through the streets and different districts, I found myself just looking at scenery around me. There is so much detail in this world that personally, after playing games since I was a little baby, I had never seen something of that scope and size. 
As you are moving through different areas, you will see everything. From rundown buildings and homeless people, to beautiful parks that feel alive, the bustling neon-covered streets where people are trying to get home or just get by. Going from one area on foot to another was like exploring a real, actual city. And all of this is enhanced by the insane level of sound quality. You hear it all. People talking in the distance, cars in the background, AVs flying above your head, police alerts through the city, ads playing music and talking about various products, and constant advertising makes this an insane experience if you are playing on a headset, which is something I definitely recommend. Honestly, this city was make it or break it for me. If there was one thing which immerses me, it's the levels and the map and the areas in video games. And just how they actually made Night City look and how much attention they paid to every inch of this city is why it took me so long to just go through everything and figure stuff out and I still haven't seen it all. That's why th this game is just so beautiful in that way because you're always going to find a new street you're always going to find a new park which is going to give you something or it's just going to be very interesting and beautiful to see and i understand why it took them so long to make this because wow there is also a constant presence of danger obviously each district is controlled by gangs and you will find all sorts of gangs hanging out everywhere so it doesn't have to necessarily be a district where let's say the mocks hang out you will find 6th street there maelstrom uh various other people valentinos that will just be around you know they're gonna be doing their own thing and if you get close to them or you are interesting to them they might come after you or maybe they become suspicious so they take out their knife or their weapon so Combining both the beauty of this world with the danger and the fear people have in 2077 just enhanced this whole overall experience. And until you see it for yourself in the game, I'm afraid this feeling cannot be described with words. The city itself is beautiful, both during the day and night. And even the overall atmosphere changes with different parts of the day, and since all of that is enhanced by different weather effects like fog, rain and storms, it can have some truly breathtaking moments. Regarding Badlands, they are such a huge contrast to Night City. Generally, it's a lot more open, more calm, less people out, because that area is lore-wise very dangerous. I really want you all to experience Badlands for the first time properly, so I didn't want to include too much gameplay from the Nomad playthrough, etc, etc. I gave you a couple of uh, shots so you can kind of see what's it all about. But most importantly, Badlands in this game have a purpose to be there. It's not just there so they could extend the map. Overall, there is stuff to do, people to meet, and you will especially get the full scope of what I'm talking about with the Nomad playthrough. But overall, it's cool to go out from Night City, and honestly, I'm really glad that some Badlands are included in the map and in the game, because it makes everything so much bigger and adds more room to the map. Also, there is a sort of a wanted level, so you can't really go outside and shoot everyone. I mean, you can, but the Psycho Squad that comes after you, I tried, and oof, I was done in a matter of seconds. But the game will not force NCPD onto you. You won't steal a car and automatically get a whole squad after you. It can happen if they see you, but in most cases, even though I was blasting gangs, if you don't hit civilians, or if it's a secluded street, you are okay, it's 2077 after all, so honestly, police wasn't really annoying in the game, I didn't really see them all that much coming after me, but at the same time, I wasn't really going over the people or shooting people on the streets. Unless you are in Pacifica, then fire away, it's a combat zone after all. And there is so much visible passion you see devs had when you go somewhere and look at the city from the distance. 
and as you are going from one street to another, you will see something and say, ah, let me check what this is. And you might be on the start of an adventure that you didn't plan in the first place. One of the things I like to do is not select any mission whatsoever, but just go roam through the streets, and if there is a mission which is close, I go and pick it up, and it was a truly great experience to have. And personally, I didn't use fast travel yet, but you can if you want. There are many fast travel areas like signposts in The Witcher 3 that you can choose to travel from. So on that side, it's, it's very good. Also, this game draws a lot from The Witcher 3 formula. As I said, with activities that can be similar to bandit camps, hidden treasure hunts, monster hunting, and protected treasure. And all of this was improved for Cyberpunk 2077 to make it more interesting, and it did. Every time I finished an activity, I got enough from it to boost my character, so it's definitely recommended, and most importantly, it kept my attention, especially Cyber Psychos. Those events happen like mini boss fights, and some of them can be really deadly, fast, and fun. Next up, let's talk about graphics. I am running this on i7-7700 and 1070 from Nvidia with 16 gigs of RAM. Also, it's important to note that I'm running the game on an SSD, which is recommended, and I will give you the perfect example why later in the section of the video. The game itself, from the graphics standpoint, especially if you can push it to Ultra, is beautiful. I was able to run this on high settings in 1080p resolution. This footage has been upscaled to 4K. There is also the Ultra setting, keep that in mind. And also, as I said, I was running this on an SSD because there are no loading screens in the game once you actually loading your first save from the main menu it's really fast after that you get a loading screen if you are fast traveling which is also very very fast but nevertheless everything else zero load times and because of that because of the constant loading um, in the background which is not visible like the game is not going to not open a door because let's say the next part of that level is loading that didn't happen to me so the loading is done really well but you need to have an ssd honestly i i don't know how this game will run on a hard drive because hard drives are not fast enough to read and write all of the information that this game actually has so it will be interesting to see it on a hard drive but i definitely recommend an ssd or nvme if you want to go for something even faster Generally, the frame rate I got in various areas was from 70 to 120. Keep in mind, I, I'm still waiting on the release update to see how that is going to change or if it's going to change the overall frame rate. I will make an updated video after that day one patch, but what I had a chance to see was that sometimes my frame rate will drop to 20 to 30 in some areas, so small pockets in the city, like city center, or where you have a ton of NPCs, but generally for for me personally, that was only in few cases. Through most of the city and badlands in general, I had a stable frame rate, again on high settings, and most of those hiccups actually happened when there are a lot of objects, or just as I said, NPCs or buildings. It never actually happened randomly as I was standing in a field with nothing around me, then frame rate was just amazing. So what about graphics? Well, they are gorgeous. I really don't know how they managed to make this level of quality even if the game is not maxed out. Again, I'm running this on high settings, not ultra, without RTX. For example, the textures can be so sharp that I was able to read posters from walls. Going through the street, I was able to read some of the signposts that were really far away from me. So clearly, on that sense, texture-wise, it's extremely sharp. Then on the light and effect standpoint, the red engine they are using, which has been optimized and made for this game, is really doing wonders, with various Im implementations of reflections, and overall quality of them is great. So from the graphics standpoint, this is one of the most beautiful games I had a chance to play, especially because they play with all kinds of lights and effects and LEDs, which kind of enhances the whole experience. But that's mostly like that because devs really wanted it to stand out. So the quality of items on the ground, then the quality of textures on the weapons and detail and clothing was absolutely fantastic and they outdid themselves with that. Now, as I said, I do get those FPS hiccups sometimes, we shall see how that will be optimized on release, but again, those FPS hiccups never bothered me during gameplay, I didn't lose because I had low FPS in a scene. 
Also, in the graphic settings, you will have enough options to calibrate everything to get the max frame rate you can with your machine. So, from the standpoint of settings and the amount of options you have, I was happy and I didn't even have to restart the game in most cases And as you play around with settings. You just change the settings and resume the game. That's it. Now let's talk about gunplay and hacking. I will of course talk about melee combat after this, but first, the guns. In Cyberpunk 2077, you can wield different types of ranged weapons, like pistols, assault rifles, submachine guns, shotguns, snipers, and much more. You can find the weapons on the map in various containers, loot the weapons from enemies you flatline, or buy weapons in the stores. Same comes with clothing you can get from enemies. Not everything, but some items, yeah. Different weapons offer you different damage, different effects like more ricocheting bullets or walls to shoot enemies in cover. Also, some weapons penetrate walls and obstacles. They also have different attack speed, overall damage, bleed damage, and much more. And overall, gunplay surprised me because it exceeded my initial expectations. You know, what we saw from the gameplay trailer, how generally weapons feel. But once you actually start using them, it's a whole different experience. Every bullet I shot, every move I made in combat was polished. It was fluid and the game mechanics never got in my way, especially how the weapon moves when you go around cover or when you go around obstacles. That was really cool and really well done. So I was able to move, shoot, change weapons with ease. And even though weapons feel heavy, they shoot really well. I never experienced that bullets goes in a random direction, so all of my shots went straight into the target. And if I miss something, I miss something. It's not like like RPG stat came into place and made me miss. But it is important if you want to increase your skill and we'll, we will talk more about that because increasing your shooting skill does actually make everything much more polished because you increase your proficiency with weapons so you are aiming faster down the site, you can reload faster, etc, etc. Animations of weapons were done really well, there is so much detail on them, like small parts of the weapon that actually move and are animated, so both recoil and animation reload have the same quality like I picked up an FPS game, a good one. And it's been a while since I had seen gunplay this good in an RPG game, which is not primarily focusing on that, you know, first person shooter, but I'm happy that it's good because I always like to go back to it and just shoot stuff even though I wanted a more stealthy playthrough, but gunplay is really satisfying and it was one of my primary fears I had for the game, so I'm glad it was all good in the end. Here is also how a few weapons actually sound in the game, also with reload animation. Keep in mind, you have three weapon slots, but mid-combat you can change weapons, so that's not a problem. Let's take a look at hacking. Besides shooting, you can take much more stealthy character that utilizes daemons or well hacks to hack objects and enemies. So people can be hacked as well. There are many options you can choose from. Keep in mind, you have to buy or find the daemons first that you put in your cyber deck that you later use on enemies or well objects. There is also a limit to the amount of daemons you can put and there is also a limit of how much hacking you can do depending on your cyber deck, so depending on the amount of RAM you have. So some action is going to take you 4 RAM, if the enemy is maybe stronger it will take you 9 RAM, so you have to have a good cyber deck if you want to pull off more of those uh, hacks. For example, there is a hack which is a ping that shows location of enemies connected to that network, so you just upload that ping to a person and it will show everyone in the near um, vicinity. Or you can reboot their eyes or wipe their memory so that they had never actually seen you and they exit the combat stance. There are a lot of options regarding that, so on that front I was happy. If you're going for a full Netrunner playthrough, you will have a lot to choose from. When it comes to objects, you can utilize hacks on various devices that will distract enemies or even overload that object. It will explode if enemies get close to investigate. You can also take controls of cameras, open up different doors through quick hacks, but you can even connect 
to the entire network of the place and once you hack that you have more options there that gives you access to open up doors or shut down cameras with ease where you don't have to actually spend that much RAM because you already breached certain level of security. Now hacking is not only for stealth because this game has a fluid class system I will talk about but you can be a mix of everything both solo and netrunner if you want to go for a melee build with huge armor you can do that as well so that's up to you and your decisions. So what I did is I assaulted the base let's say head on but I also use daemons to damage enemies as I'm running towards them so once you activate the scan mode you can move around freely so that's not going to be a problem. So. I reboot their Kiroshi so they cannot shoot properly. Overall, in that sense, game gives you a lot of freedom to shape your V how you want to shape your V. So I was able to go in full guns blazing and still utilize all of the hacks I had at my disposal to help me go through the level or maybe just uh, confuse the enemy or do something like that. So on both sides, you can use perks and different skills to fit your own playstyle. Now what about melee and hand-to-hand -hand combat? Well, when it comes to melee you can choose from various things like katanas, tantos, knives, baseball bats, a wrench, etc, etc. I tested out melee a bit and at start your V is limited with attacks you can pull off with melee. It wasn't bad at all, I wouldn't have a problem to go for a full melee playthrough because what I had a chance to see it felt nice, uh, mostly because takedown animations are cool but Overall there is depth in melee, but nothing too grand. But it's still enough to keep you interested in that playstyle if you want. And I was playing on mouse and keyboard so I didn't have people go on various sides when I was punching someone or had my V slashing a blade in a different direction. Maybe it happens um, on, on a console or well with the, uh, with the controller. That personally never happened and I used melee multiple times because it can really be powerful but of course you have to get close to an enemy which can be a problem since they also do damage so you have to invest into more armor. Same with hand to hand combat, there is only so much you can do from first person and CDPR try their best and you can see it, I mean this is probably the best combat that could have been included in this game formula which doesn't break the initial idea let's say but um it's important to know that this is not Kingdom Come Deliverance, but at the same time, I actually thought that melee was fun. Um, and it's not just the uh, spamming left mouse button, because there is a strong and a light attack, or well, faster attack. You can block with both melee and hand-to-hand. -hand. Also, you can counter attacks, which, you know, follow up with your own attack, and just spamming left mouse button or just one attack against stronger enemies is not going to work so don't think that melee is going to be easy just because you um, clicked left mouse button. Sometimes enemies can really really make you hurt if you just do that. Keep in mind you also have crafting so you get materials from things you find like junk or disassemble weapons or clothes you have to get you know those materials and junks that you can actually use on crafting. This option allows you to craft everything you have blueprint for and also upgrade your existing equipment with those materials. Of course, if you want to craft the good stuff, you have to invest in technical skills. Otherwise, you will be kind of limited or, well, crafting will be a lot more difficult. But when you can craft, you know, when you can craft ammo and all of that, you can craft ammo without technical skills, which is not like high technical skills, but everything like epic or other really really legendary items you really need to invest in that to be able to craft it but it's not the only way to get it you can also get those things from missions from loot so it, it's not the exclusive thing but definitely recommended that you know how to um, craft and also upgrade stuff because it's it can be very useful sometimes especially because you're not going to spend money on buying different guns that you can find on the street or just well from enemies or that um, you can upgrade yourself and on top of that you don't have to spend uh, money on ammo that you can craft yourself. Next up let's talk about characters and its progression. In the game itself you have experience and street cred. You will get both from doing missions both main and side and side activities on the map or even doing random stuff can sometimes award you experience or street cred. With more street cred you have options to new missions from fixers because they will call you up all the time with uh, new things you can do but um, you can choose if you actually want to do that or not if you want to revisit that mission later. No worries the game is not going to rush you 
anywhere or force you anywhere where you don't want to go at that particular time. As you level up your character, you can invest into two things, your attributes and perks. Each attribute you have, like body, reflex, technical, cool, intelligence, per level you get one attribute point you can put in. And then each attribute expands to various perks like reflex, has guns, pistols and melee. So even if you are the type of character that likes to shoot, you can choose in what you want to specialize in, like pistols, or maybe you are more of that submachine guns and assault rifle person, and each of those perks in every attribute will give you different bonuses for your character. Again, the tree is flexible, so you can pick and choose different perks that benefit your playstyle, but keep in mind, some perks only unlock if you have a certain attribute level. So being a jack of all trades is possible, but definitely not recommended, because you can never take full advantage of one of those attributes. So I always recommend having one main attribute and then having two secondary attributes to invest in that will help your main attribute. Using weapons or doing hacks or sneaking will give you proficiency level. And after you level up with that, like you use the rifle for an hour or maybe you hacked or you were sneaking around, everything kind of gives you those uh, perks. Then you can invest um, those perks into everything. It doesn't have to be in that particular tree. So once you get a perk point, you can invest in all five of those trees. Regarding the map, different missions and activities have different levels. So if you're level five, enemies that are level 15 will have skull on them. Or on the map, it will say status danger very high. Uh, which means enemies are much more stronger than you and in most cases they will take you down easily So you need to start with some missions and activities that you know are Moderately difficult or maybe their threat level is not high to increase the level of the character and then move on to different You know more demanding tasks and missions Especially if you are playing on the hardest difficulty, it is extremely important to level up your character before going on to main stuff. But the game will tell you if it, you know if the danger is moderate or low. Again, depending on the level and stats you have in the game. Overall, I didn't have issues with my character being too powerful or too weak. But if I attack stronger enemies, it, it's a huge, huge. Um, stats gap and they and they kind of get you really fast but again depending on where on the map you are it's not like you enter a different district and all of a sudden everyone is stronger in each district you have missions that require you know some require a huge level some don't require that so it's flexible all across the map regarding making eddies every mission and activity gives you money i had enough money to buy stuff from the map you know like car or maybe a gun or maybe a new piece of clothing including you know as i said different vehicles the prices are hefty for some vehicles at the start you will need a lot of cash for your augmentations etc etc you can you're going to, going to be kind of broke but later on as you play the the game gives you new things to start earning enough at ease so in my opinion you know you get the stuff you need it will take some time but uh, you will get it you won't get it straight away you won't have millions straight away but uh, as you go through the game you will be able to earn enough money to spend on various stuff. Now let's go to driving. This was one of my biggest fears because I'm really picky when it comes to the overall feel of driving vehicles and how they perform. I can say right now that I was positively surprised that the level of control and overall driving quality of this game is really satisfying. So driving different cars going from let's say economy class all the way to hypercars, I did notice a huge difference. So generally economy class is not going to be fast and you can actually see like how slow your vehicle is at the beginning and yeah, once you go into more sport mode or something faster I actually got that feeling of speed like when I was driving making turns and braking was fine. Sometimes what would happen is that my car would lose control as I said in my first impressions video but later on as I got used to controls and overall feeling of vehicles it became a lot smoother. Also, one thing I didn't like was, you know, suspension in some vehicles, like you will make a turn and something will happen and your vehicle will jump a bit, almost unnaturally. Again, it happened three to four times in my 60 hour of playing and overall I didn't get into my way and, you know, driving vehicles through the city or through the badlands was really satisfying and I like to go back into a car or a bike and just drive around. Also, driving bikes was surprisingly fun because I thought maybe they will be flimsy or maybe they won't turn well 
it wasn't the case. I had a fun time and also driving a, a bike through the city is really fun because you're able to kind of go faster everywhere because you can go between cars and yeah, driving bikes was as fun as driving vehicles. The overall design and quality of interior and vehicles is breathtaking. Every vehicle has something new in it. The designs are absolutely crazy in a good way and when they talked about recording those sounds for vehicles and how much detail there is, you can feel it. Every sound effect in cars sound really good, adding gas, acceleration, braking, you know, all of it sounds crisp and good. Uh, don't even make me start about engine sounds, I spent two hours listening to different engines of vehicles because they spend so much time on it and you can hear it. Combine both visual and audio side when the overall driving mechanics are on a very very decent level it's not Forza but it's getting there if you played Watch Dogs you know I don't like that driving so this is completely opposite also if you ram into a vehicle it won't be a huge problem because uh, cars won't stop immediately it won't be like uh, bad physics so physics wise on that side is okay I didn't have a problem with it personal even though sometimes what can happen is that I'm going to hit a vehicle and the vehicle is just going to kind of fly away a bit which was a bit unnatural but you know it didn't happen too often also you have a huge selection of bikes and cars what is important is that they perform differently so in every vehicle I got into I felt like it had different acceleration overall start and sounds were different so in that sense driving is fun because it's not the same with every vehicle that can be annoying if both a truck and a sedan drive the same, which is not the case for this game and that makes me really happy. As I said, I was happy with driving, it's much better than I initially expected and once I get better I'm sure I can drift around and just do some crazy stunts, the game doesn't block you in that way. Now we covered the visual aspects of this game, what about music and sound design? Well, that is one of the strongest aspects of this game as you had a chance to hear in a few cases. The sound design is superb, everything sounds crisp, guns sound good, vehicles sound great, the background atmosphere of the city with all its effects is beautiful if you have a good headset, or well generally it's great, you just need a good headset to hear it, and also there is sometimes that underlying music or tension which makes dialogue and various mission moments or just exploring the city on a whole different level. Let me play you the raw gameplay so you can hear everything one more time. They play so much with sounds and effects that it creates almost an insane feeling that I experienced in The Witcher or Red Dead Redemption or a Gothic and you know those games from before. It just enhanced the overall experience of the game and I'm so happy that the entire team you know did a masterful job because the audio side of the game intertwines so well with the visual side of the game that it creates a, a some sort of a synapse which is just beautiful to look at and hear. Next up let's take a look at the photo mode CDPR included. Overall I played around with it, there are a lot of options to choose from and generally activating the mode was easy, on PC I just pressed N and in each situation I was able to do it. Besides the usual setting like exposure, contrast, etc, there are also many poses, effects, stickers, different um, facial animations you can do to really make your image stand out. And I definitely do recommend that you go into this because I personally did not expect that a 
CDPR would include a photo mode this deep, but let's face it, this is great because it's free marketing, but also people have a new tool at their disposal and you can expect a lot of images from me once this game is out. And as I said, I really suggest you play around with this and I can't wait to see all of the different Vs from the community. There is also radio you can listen to in the car or various radios that are placed around, you know, the music is just awesome. There is also a radio and a TV in your apartment that you can watch. Um, there are also a lot of tracks in the game, I believe they said around 150, so the selection is huge. All of them fit into the universe and there are so many genres going from R&B, hip-hop, rock, metal, whatever. And the way it all starts, once you get into a car, it makes you look cool. It gives you that feeling like you are in a Blade Runner or in that film Drive. There is something for everyone, and I'm sure all of you will be scrolling through the radio, so again, on that front, they just did an amazing job on just creating different tracks that fit the universe and also selecting people who are going to make those tracks or, well, collaborate on those tracks. So I went through everything I liked about the game, what about the things I didn't like? Well, first off, you need to know what I knew, what I was getting into, so I wasn't expecting the second coming of Christ, but I expected a good game. The game I got was exactly how I imagined it, which is good, and all of my, well, criticism can be about bugs and glitches. Personally, I never had my game crash or I had game breaking bug where I had to reload something because it didn't want to load or it got glitched or maybe it ruined my, my playthrough. None of that happened. Most of the bugs were sometimes, you know, stuff floating in the air or maybe the dialogue was, you know, slow for some reason sometimes. Like, I was waiting up to 30 seconds sometimes for, for a dialogue to continue, but that didn't actually happen too often. For me, I think it happened two times so far. I am waiting to see what the update is going to be and how the game will run after it's out, but over at least from my personal experience, the only thing are, you know, bugs which can be fixed, especially if you look at the size of the game, but it's far from being a buggy mess, because it's not. I'm telling you my experience, what I went through the game, obviously, maybe someone's experience was different, uh, maybe someone had more bugs or glitches or game-breaking bugs, but Personally, I had nothing which is going to annoy me or something which is going to make me angry that I did something and because of a glitch or a bug, I was not able to do something. Some of those bugs and glitches were visual stuff on the map, so it wasn't anything too crazy or, or, or something which bothered me throughout my playthrough. Most of the time, I just roamed around and did stuff in the game and I had a lot of fun doing it. As I said, the only fear I had was about driving and shooting, and in the end that turned out more than I initially thought, so that was good. Also, we shall see how those FPS hiccups happen, especially once everyone gets to play it. So I will be following your thoughts on how the game runs for you. Don't worry, we will talk about it once the game is out, absolutely. But overall, this is my Cyberpunk 2077 review. I'm happy with what I had seen, and waiting all of these years actually paid out. And honestly, this is shaping to be one of my favorite games I had played in a long time. So, of course, I won't score the game, I am not into that. What I told you are my impressions and my experience and, well, overall, my thoughts on the game. And it's up to you to see if this is enough for you to buy or not buy the game. But also, I recommend checking out different opinions on the game as well. The Dark Future never looked more beautiful in, honestly, one of the biggest technological marvels such as... 2077, especially if you look at the sheer scope of this city. So huge thanks to all of the hardworking devs for actually giving us this, because I'm sure this game will be played and enjoyed for years to come, and I see many options for this game in the future. Thank you so much for watching, tell me down below, did you enjoy this and what are your thoughts? Also, please click that like and subscribe button for more Cyberpunk 2077, because I am just warming up and also join our growing community on Twitter and Discord. I also do have a Patreon page, if you were looking for an extra way to support the channel, you can do it through the link below. And huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. This is LKM signing out, and stay classy everyone, see you on release.